All right. Um, so uh, starting here, I'm just looking at uh, I've kind of handpicked an issue here. So I'm looking at my uh, we have filters that are saved that are by team. So again, all of the all of the issues uh, get automatically triaged. So whenever I'm looking at my team's issues, I would look at under my team's filter. Uh, in this case, I'm just I just took one issue as an example. Uh, now I'm looking into this issue first. What's what's really handy here is that I see there's already a, a, a Jira issue open for that. So for from here I can go into that Jira issue, and then I can see the status of that Jira issue. Uh, I can see what's going on, and 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 if it's already in a sprint. If not, then I I know I need to go and check with the team what's going on and make sure it goes into an upcoming sprint. Um, now from here I can go into uh, the issue itself. Releases have been very helpful for us uh, within Sentry. So within 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 Sentry within this within this issue here, I see on the right uh, that this issue was first seen seven days ago with our 2.0.112 release. Uh, from here, I can go into go into that and dig more, and then I can see what where the file changed and what actually caused that, which makes it way easier for uh, whoever is on call, whoever is investigating an issue to know, okay, this line of code actually caused that issue to start happening. Uh, uh, so from the releases, I can see the commits, see the files changed and, and, and look into uh, narrow down exactly what could have caused this issue to start happening. Um, but what's really more important here and going back to code owners, uh, this issue, when it first when when it was first opened, it got automatically assigned to core engineering here. And the reason why it was automatically assigned to code engineering is because of code owner. So when I hover here over code engineering, I see that it matched uh, core engineering code ownership uh, uh, rule. And uh, because we own the backend integrations mod module, that meant that it got automatically assigned to us. So this has been very helpful. It wasn't only helpful on the Sentry side, it was also helpful and a good exercise for us to keep our code owners in a good, uh, in a good spot uh, on GitHub. Uh, so it forces us to keep updating our code owners on GitHub and also because we are also getting the benefit of automatically triaging our issues on, uh, on Sentry. <clears throat> So um, going, uh, and, and, and in addition to that as well is uh, the fact that we are centrally managing this code ownership in Git uh, helps us a lot rather than having two source of truths and then we have to update those two source of truths. That would have been very painful for us to keep up to date. Most probably it would have been kind of drifted and, and, and out of date. Uh, now from that, we can, we can actually follow the trace, uh, which is also very helpful when debugging API calls. So here I see that the trace, uh, uh, this specific transaction, uh, a transaction is uh, the, the equivalent of an API call. Uh, it's just the measure of an API call on Sentry performance. And then I can see here that uh, it took 320 milliseconds. I see that we return a 502. We enrich all of our Sentry errors and Sentry transactions. It's actually very easy through the Python SDK to just add tags part of a request. We usually do that part of our authentication layer. Uh, we just inject like what, what org ID, for example, this was. Uh, so in this case, I know which org ID it is. Org IDs are just identifiers of our clients. Uh, and uh, uh, so I'm, I see that we return the 502. We, uh, we have, this was affecting this specific org. Uh, I can either go into the summary and then dig more into what this issue, uh, uh, how many times we had a failure rate on that, on that specific uh, API call. Uh, how many times we are getting transactions, so transaction per minute. Um, so if we have a high failure rate, then something is off. Uh, so here, for example, on March 29, something has gone off because we got into a 17% failure rate. And all of those are configurable through alerts as well. So as we figure out, all right, a failure rate of more than 2% is something we don't want to tolerate, then we set up alerts from Sentry to fire our on-call escalations. Uh, here we can also see what is actually the slowest part of our request. Uh, 
And uh, in this case, it is uh, uh, it is Elasticsearch. So this is something worth looking into. If I were to look into that specific trace itself, I can go directly into that transaction. And then from that transaction, I can see what was the API call that was made, what was the transaction, and then all the headers and all the API call and, and all the, all the uh, parts of that ABI call. So this gives me a way to first identify where, where exactly the issue came from and where uh, and how to replicate it, uh, which is by far the most important part of investigating an issue like that. So this is mostly how we tackle issues. Now from here comes alerting. Uh, alerting is very important. And um, I mentioned briefly before the, the rule of uh, and if an event happens more than X times. For us, what we identified as a good number is 10 times. So this is a rule that we have where if an, if an event happens more than 10 times in production, we fire an Ops Genie alert. And Ops Genie is the equivalent of pager duty if you're familiar with that. It's just a non-call, uh, on-call rotation system. Uh, and we, we use those, uh, uh, we just fire an alert on Ops Genie Again, 10 times, I think every single team should define what, uh, what works for them. Uh, 10 times has worked for us uh, uh, for a while. It hasn't been too noisy to the point where we're firing escalations that shouldn't be handled, but at the same time, where there hasn't been issues that needed direct attention that, hasn't, that has gone unnoticed. But along with code owners, we can also take alerting to, uh, to the next step. So since 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 when a new issue is getting opened, it's getting automatically triaged uh, through code owners, then we have alerts set up like this one. Uh, so here what I'm saying is that if uh, any issue that happens, uh, if it's assigned to the core engineering team and the event environment is production, I want this to send the Slack message to core services sentry. What this allows us to do is now we have a way to uh, to just notify the core engineering team of every single issue that is happening within uh, that team, uh, and we're not there's no noise from other teams as well, uh, and and it allows us to have side discussions on Slack if we need to about what do we like is there anything we need to improve or just have a sense of how things are going if there's anything weird happening in our environments. So this is how we used alerting in our environments, and uh, it has been going uh, pretty well for us. There's definitely a few things we would want to improve, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. Now, going into our internal tools, uh, we've also used uh, the Sentry API to enrich our internal tools. So I, we have uh, connectors platforms. Uh, connectors are... Uh, uh, basically a way for our clients to ingest data from their data sources, whether that's Confluence, Zendesk. In this case, I took Zendesk as an example. Uh, and we build internal tools uh, uh, in order to have our solution architects, uh, core engineers, or, uh, or implementation engineers look into, those, uh, look into those jobs and investigate why, if there's an issue, what, what the issue is. Uh, we've, all, we've integrated that with, our, with the Sentry API. Uh, so in this case, for example, I see there's a Sentry model here. So this job was a Zendesk job. I triggered that in March and it had failed. And I see that this, uh, there's a Sentry issue here. So it directly showed up here. Uh, now, as a, as a user myself, I can see that this issue was resolved. Uh, this is only internal, uh, but I can see that this issue was resolved. And uh, uh, I can see that it was assigned to the core engineering team. So if I need to follow up, I know who to follow up with. I know who's the owner of that issue. I know how many times it happened, but since this is the issue is resolved, this probably means that now I can just go in and, uh, and uh, re-trigger my job and it should work. Uh, well, uh, now from here, if I need more information, I can always just click on that. It will directly deep link me into the actual issue. So this was for us a really good use of the Sentry API because at the end of the day, we uh, it helped us reduce the amount of uh, ad hoc questions we get from uh, uh, from solution in, uh, from solution engineers and outside teams outside of core because we're exposing to them the tools that we use internally ourselves to debunk uh, our issues. Uh, so that has has been very helpful along with the ability to 
pinpoint what team is responsible for that issue directly from the job that they are looking into. We all we do all of that by just pushing uh, the proper sentry tags and, and, and identifiers. So each connector job, for example, gets a sentry, uh, uh, gets a tag that gives it a connector job ID. And then uh, when we're uh, when we're loading that page, we just make an API call uh, to the sentry API saying, like, do you have any issues tagged with that uh, connector job ID? And if we get an answer back, that means uh, uh, that means there is an issue, and then we show it inside of that model. Now, going from here, uh, there's a few things that uh, uh, that I also use in order to keep things uh, in check. Uh, for example, there's this uh, dashboard uh, that's uh, that I've built inside of dashboards. Uh, dashboard is a way to build uh, uh, multiple widgets based on queries inside of uh, Jira. Uh, so what I've divided this, this is mostly for myself to see like what are ongoing issues that we have. Uh, so what I'm looking here is uh, what are the top issues that are happening? Uh, uh, what is the number of all the issues that's happening? So if there's a big spike, this is something that I could easily identify. All of those are narrowed down by core engineering. So I'm only seeing those for my team across all of our services deploy that for top. Um, and I can also see the list of issues. What's really most relevant here is again, this JIRA integration. Uh, what I can see here is that this issue already has a JIRA ticket and I can go in and check that JIRA ticket. Uh, this helps me kind of know, all right, this is something that we are, that is on our radar already. This is not already on our radar. This is probably something we should look into uh, either resolve or, uh, or if there's anything that needs to happen, any change or any additional research, we need to go and open a, a Jira issue uh, from that from from that uh, uh, century issue and tackle it in upcoming sprints. So this this dashboard has been particularly very very helpful for us. In addition to uh, the team's task dashboard, so that's that's a new dashboard that has been very useful. Uh, so for example, here if you go to stats and then go to issues filtered by your team. Um, I, uh, it helps me know what, how many unresolved issues we have over time. Unresolved issues have been very helpful uh, because it helps us know, all right, are we getting better or not? Uh, but uh, uh, what's also very important is new and returning issues. For me, this is by far the biggest, uh, uh, the biggest metric I look at. How many new issues are we introducing? How many regressions are we getting in production? And uh, it helps me identify, right, let's just double down on, on, on quality of our code. We move fast, we deploy a few times a day to production, but that should not mean we're compromising quality. And quality is easily measurable. Uh, uh, through obviously many metrics. This is one of the metrics that I use myself. Uh, another metric as well is uh, time to resolution. Uh, so here, actually, we started using code owners around February. Uh, so before code owners, again, we had a big backlog of uh, issues and, uh, and all of them were unassigned. We had no proper way to know whether an issue is for team X or team Y. Uh, all issues just go into a big backlog. So we, our time to resolution for our issues were terrible. Uh, a month, uh, 1.2 month. But then after using code owners, now we started getting a sense into, okay, this is my team's issues. Those are things that I'm familiar with. I have context on this. Let me go and look into it and fix it. Uh, along with the sentry audits, we started having time to resolution uh, to hours rather than uh, hours and days rather than months. Um, so that's kind of how uh, how how what I use inside of Century. Um, a few things that we also got out of this is uh, defining internal OKRs or, or service level uh, objectives uh, within our teams. Like we use, for example, uh, time to resolution or new uh, new issues or even latency. Like uh, here's a good example of latency. So that's a dashboard that measures our search latency. So search, uh, the search, uh, the, the the internal search uh, that that powers search for all, all teams at Fortad is maintained by core engineering as well. And this lets us monitor like what is our search latency. And uh, uh, it gives us room for improvement. And then we can set service level objectives that say we are OKRs that say we want to improve search by by X percent uh, latency uh, on P95s. Uh, so this is this is those are 
kind of the dashboards that I personally use in order to measure our efficiency and, and just our performance. And I also use those dashboards in order to report to uh, upper management CTO or my 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 direct manager uh, in order to uh, measure how things are going and 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 measure the progress on our uh, on our goals for the quarter uh, regarding just quality of 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 uh, of our code. Uh, so that's a bit about about our workflow. Uh, 